Hey everyone, Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com, brought to you by my generous patrons at patreon.com slash DrNerdLove. This week, I want to help you on your journey to be the sexy badass you know you can be. And to do that, I want to talk with you about one of the least appreciated skills when it comes to dating. A skill that adds excitement to your relationship, whether it is brand new or long term, and keeps things hot even when you can't see each other. We are talking this week about sexting. Sexting is a skill that is invaluable whether you have a friends with benefits relationship or a semi-regular casual hookup or if you're in a long distance relationship or if, like a lot of folks, you're not shacked up with the person you were dating before the lockdown happened. In fact, Knowing how to flirt over text or how to start sexting with someone the right way may be one of the most invaluable relationship skills that you can have during the COVID-19 lockdown. Whether you are quarantined away from your partner or, like many people, you're still active on dating apps. After all, one of the hardest things about quarantining on your own or away from your partner is that lack of simple physical contact. And that means there are a lot of folks out there who are hornier than a three peckered billy goat. And that is how you demonetize a video, kids. Whether you have only just started flirting with someone, you've had a few dates on Skype or otherwise, or you've been dating for a while, trying to keep things hot can be difficult, especially at a time when you can't see or touch each other for who knows how long. And right now, Sexting is one of the few ways that we can responsibly get our rocks off with someone who doesn't currently live with us. If 2020 couldn't get any weirder, who would have thought that we would be seeing state governments telling us to sext more? But hey, here we are. What's kind of fascinating is that sexting is held in low regard. Whenever we talk about it, it is often in the context of unwanted dick pics, really awkward come-ons, and strangers demanding nudes from other strangers. But here's the thing. Studies have found that most people are really into sexting, whether with their long-term partners or with someone they have a strong connection with. But you have to know how to get things started the right way, in a way that turns people on, not just by airdropping your dick or saying, hey, can I f your tits within the first couple of messages. That last one has happened to more friends of mine than I care to count. That is why today I want to teach you how to sext like a gentleman. Rule number one, sexting is seduction. The first thing you need to understand for fun, sexy time via your phone is that sexting is ultimately a process of seduction. The mistake that so many guys make is that they don't understand this and they try to leap right into things without laying the groundwork. Just as you don't start off a date by saying, so you gonna suck my dick or what? And if you do, I think we figured out why you're still single. When it comes to sexting, you have to build up to it. You have to warm things up, build the mood, help set things in motion so that sexting happens almost without effort on your part. Seduction, after all, isn't about getting someone to do what you want. It's about giving them permission to do something that they want to do. That is why being crude, crass, or abrupt is how you end up getting left on red. You weren't turning them on, you were just trying to boss rush your way to sex and that doesn't work. Now, the great thing about building the mood is that there are any number of ways to do this, ways that you can tailor to your personality and the nature of your relationship. You can be romantic, you can be silly, you can be flirty and sexual. It is all about how you lead into things. In a long distance relationship, or one where you're going to be separated for a while, you might start with, I miss you so much right now, or I really wish I could fill in the blank with you right now. If you're seeing someone casually or you're just starting out, you might say, oh, hey, sorry, I just had the most inappropriate thought about you. Or, hey, I'm gonna be really busy today and your being so sexy is gonna be distracting for me. The thing to remember is that the lead up to any sort of sexual activity, including sexting, is a dance. You want them to be moving with you, in sync with you, not away from you, and not against you. That is why dropping your dick into the conversation without warning, prompting, or a direct request 
is a lot like a cat dropping a dead baby squirrel at your feet and then wondering why you're not more pleased with its gift. Building the mood is all about the slow burn. You want to take turns escalating things and enjoy the anticipation as part of the process. Which leads us to rule number two. Use your words. Sexting isn't just about pictures. In fact, trying to go straight to pictures is kind of an amateur move, especially when you're only casually seeing someone. People are far more likely to be up for sexting when it's all in text. In fact, you are likely to get a lot further and do a lot more via text. Texting has a disinhibiting effect. It doesn't feel as real. You aren't seeing the person you're texting and so you often feel like you can do more and get away with more. This means that people are more likely to push the envelope a little and be up for talking about or describing things that they would be too shy, too modest, or too embarrassed to try in person. And frankly, a lot of times, text is hotter. After all, words have been the dominant medium for seduction and arousal since humans developed language. The Song of Songs in the Old Testament is a literal poem of sexual longing. Heloise and Abelard conducted an affair across thousands of miles with nothing but letters to sustain their connection. Pablo Neruda, Langston Hughes, John Donne, Sappho, Charles Baudelaire, all showed the power of words to arouse us, excite us, and turn us on. Like the wise man once said, language was invented with one purpose and one purpose alone, to woo women. And in that endeavor, gentlemen, laziness will not do. I cannot do a Robin Williams impression to save my life, and everybody's probably happier about that. When you're sexting, knowing how to use your words properly is a power move. You will turn on women far more if you know what to say and how to say it than you ever will by just showing them your dick. Of course, this means knowing what to say and how to say it. And for that, I suggest you do your research. Reading poetry, especially classical erotic poetry, can help you learn the magic of rhythm, of wordplay, and imagery. Similarly, reading things that women find erotic gives you ideas of what they actually want to hear, whether it's erotica on Kindle or the smutfic tags on an archive of our own. Taking things that you already know that they're into and playing it back to them is so powerful, it's almost like using a cheat code. Rule number three, sexting is interactive. In any form of sex, whether in person, over video, or via text, there is a universal truth. There are fewer turnoffs greater than one person doing all the work and the other person just sitting there going, yeah, yeah. This is one of the most common ways that sexting goes wrong. Guys have a tendency to initiate, but then sit back and wait for women to do all of the heavy lifting and just ask for more. As if constantly saying, okay, yeah, give me more, give me more, give me more, what else? is going to inevitably lead to your seeing some boobs. Sexting, like all forms of flirting, is a two-person job. Like I said, it is a dance. Two people moving in harmony with one another. You have to work together and with each other in order to build and maintain the mood. That's why you can't just keep on saying, ooh, what else, or more, and expect that things are gonna go any further. When someone is working to create a particular mood, the least sexy thing that you can say is, and then? And then? Now, in fairness, sometimes you may not be sure where to go with things or what to say, but in those moments, then what you want to do is ask and build that ask into the flirting and the seduction. Ask things like, what do you wish I were doing? Or where do you want to be touched right now? It's important that you frame those questions into what would they want you to be doing, not just what are you doing or what would you be doing if I were there? If you want a response that's more than just eating cereal, you need to make it about what they want to hear from you in that moment. Just as importantly, you need to build off what each other says instead of trying to force things to go one way or the other. It's the old improv rule of yes and. This makes things more collaborative and helps ensure that sexting is gonna go in a direction that your partner likes 
and is actually into. That, in turn, means that they're more likely to escalate things themselves as they get turned on, including being interested in sending or receiving pictures. Speaking of which, rule number four, words before nudes. Part of the reason why guys are often bad at sexting is that they are far too focused on getting pictures and not the process. And that doesn't work with someone you're not already exchanging pictures with. Don't get me wrong, trading pictures with someone you're seeing or just starting to see is unspeakably hot. But trying to rush the process is a lot like trying to skip foreplay. There's no buildup, no excitement, and your partner isn't going to be getting as much from it, which makes them less interested in participating at all. On the other hand, when you stoke those fires, build up that mood, and get good at turning your partner on with your words, they are far more likely to want to kick things up to the next level, which means that you are much more likely to get nudes. Now, and in the future. After all, when your partner is turned on before sending pictures of themselves, they are far more likely to associate that feeling with you and the act of taking and sending pics to you as well as getting them from you. It becomes a way of building to a climax, as it were. The key is to make the pivot smoothly by finding the right moment. If they say that they are so turned on right now or something is incredibly hot, saying, show me, is gonna get a better response than I want to see your tits. At the same time, ask before sending your own pictures. You can either ask directly, can I show you how turned on I am right now, or lead into it the same way they did. Tell your partner how hard they're making you and let them ask to see. Now granted, once you're at that stage when you're texting with someone, asking is probably a formality, but it's still better to ask first. Hell, for all you know, they're someplace where the last thing they want is for your naked ass, no matter how much they like it, to suddenly be front and center on their phone screen. Incidentally, you could do an entire episode about how guys can learn to take sexier pictures of themselves, and I've included some basic tips on how to take a good photo in a previous episode, so hit the thing or check the link in the show notes. But as a free tip, the least sexy pictures are the ones that are just of your junk, especially either from the top down or in the mirror. I get that you're proud of it, but it ain't as aesthetically interesting to literally anyone else. Anyone who is into you would rather see it in context with the rest of you than just seeing a fleshy recreation of the monolith scene from 2001. And honestly, a lot of the women you're flirting with tend to prefer butts. The other thing to keep in mind is that often going full nude is far less sexy or interesting than keeping things strategically covered. If you want to get good at sending pics, study pinups, research the kind of pictures that women like seeing, and learn how to replicate that. And seriously, gentlemen, I understand why all the mirror selfies, but it's the future. Get yourself a stand and a Bluetooth trigger. That alone will take your sexting to the next level. Finally, we have what is probably the most important rule of all. Rule number five, practice safe sext. The thing to keep in mind is that even in this day and age, when we all have pocket-sized film studios with us at all times, and pretty much everyone has taken or sent nudes or racy photos of themselves, there can still be consequences if those photos escape into the wild ones that you and your partner would probably rather avoid. Sending photos comes with risks, and keeping them comes with more. Even services like Snapchat that promise they delete the image can't stop people from snagging them and keeping them. And the ways those photos get out there isn't just restricted to revenge porn or people being to their exes. Sometimes they can leak through no fault of your own. Friends go through your phone, airdrop photos to themselves, computer and phone repair services are notorious for skimming through hard drives and looking for porn and nudes, and all of the many, many data breaches that we have had over the last few years mean that your passwords are probably out there, which increases the odds of someone being able to get into your Dropbox or other online stash. As a rule of thumb, you have to assume that if it's connected to a network, it's not secure. That means you want to keep things as safe as you possibly can, with two-factor authentication turned on wherever possible, through an app, not through text, 
and a unique, complicated password, ideally one that you change on a regular basis. In an ideal world, you'd be deleting the pictures soon after you received them and got off. But let us be real, nobody's doing that. So realize getting pictures of someone is a privilege and that means you have a responsibility to them that should be taken seriously. So do yourself and your partner a favor. Keep those sexy pics as safe and secure as possible. If somebody knows that their nudes are safe with you, you'll be guaranteed to get more of them. All right, one more thing before we go. Over the last few weeks, you've heard me talking about the upcoming Dating Accelerator program, a eight-week seminar where I will be teaching you and a limited number of students how to transform your dating life and help you build the social success you have always wanted. I'm taking a very limited number of students for the beta test, and I have kept the sign-up open for longer than initially planned because of the coronavirus pandemic. However, the sign-ups will be closing at the end of this month. So if you want to take part in the beta test, this is your last chance. And because this is the beta, people who sign up now will be getting the beta test prices. The price will go up later on. So if you want in at the most affordable price, now's the time. Visit nerdloveacademy.com slash the dash dating dash accelerator dash program, or click the link in the show notes to learn more and to reserve your spot in the program. And that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in. So you have heard from me, and now I want to hear from you. How have you kept things hot with your partner while you've been apart? Share your story, your techniques, your methods in the comments below. Meanwhile, if you want to take time during the quarantine to develop your social skills, learn how to meet new and amazing women, and, and to become the badass Casanova that you've always wanted to be so that you'll be ready when, to hit the ground running when things open up again, then check out my book, New Game Plus, The Geek's Guide to Love, Sex, and Dating. This is the instruction manual you have always wanted. It is the A to Z guide for learning how to develop your sexy badass and find the relationship you have always been looking for, whether it is for the night or for a lifetime. Links to buy it are in the show notes, so go check it out. And if you do check it out, or any of my other books for that matter, such as, say, my book on texting, be sure to rate and review it on Amazon and Goodreads. It is a huge, huge help to me. If you're digging the series, you've gotten to the part where you know what to do, hit the thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, share it with your friends, especially this episode, because let's be honest, this is a topic that gets demonetized, so there aren't gonna be any ads, so you're sharing it around is a huge, huge help to me right now. But if you are really enjoying these videos, and I mean really enjoying them, if you feel like you're getting a lot out of it, you're finding that it's really helping, and you wanna support the channel, and in the process, help fund some awesome new projects, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Even $1 is a huge help. It all goes to covering hosting and equipment costs. And it's like I always say, I can't do this without the help of my patrons. So whether you've just joined me or you've been a patron from the very beginning, thank you so very much. Meanwhile, follow me on Twitter at, at DrNerdLove. Join the private Facebook group, NerdLove Academy, at facebook.com slash group slash DrNerdLove. And as always, hit the logo to subscribe, check out my other videos, and I will see you here next time with more about love, sex, and dating. Thanks for watching.